I'm Dr. Betty Young, and I serve as the president of Hawking College. Joining me tonight for dinner and our uh, regular etiquette and professionalism seminar is uh, to, my, to my immediate left, uh, Ryan Reeder, who is our dean for arts, business, and science, and to my immediate right, Jeff Dobemeyer, chief of staff and CFO for Hawking College. You'll notice that these gentlemen are both dressed appropriately for tonight. Jeff is what we would call a business casual. Notice it's a collared shirt, very important. Always a collared shirt is business professional. Um, no collar is more casual, okay? So you want to uh, keep that in mind. And uh, Mr. Reeder is wearing a tie and a sports coat, also very appropriate for business settings. We're going to talk a little bit about dressing uh, for success tonight. We're going to talk a lot about brand and reputation um, because this is really important to your overall success. So I uh, grew up about 60 miles from here in Nelsonville in a holler um, without a lot of sophistication. And so along the way, I had to learn the rules of the game. Just like whether you're playing football or uh, golf or whatever your game is, um, you have to know the rules in order to be successful at that game. And same thing goes for life. You absolutely must know the rules of the game. So the rules we're going to talk about tonight are not rules for poverty. Now to listen, I understand and I know very well, living in poverty requires its own set of rules and you better know them in order to survive. But we're not preparing you to live in poverty graduating from Hawking College. We are preparing you for a middle class life and one where you will have the ability to be upwardly mobile. That's my goal for all of you and tonight we're going to share some of those rules of the game so that you can know what's the right thing to do, what's the playbook, and how do you develop your playbook for wherever you choose to live. All across the country the rules might be a little bit different, but they're not going to be a lot different. Also, depending on the industry you work in, it will be a little bit different, but not a lot different. So tonight we're going to talk about sort of standard rules of the middle class in a business environment. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of those deviations as we go through the evening. So enjoy your time with us, um, and uh, I, I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you. All right, to get us started then, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the dinner etiquette so that we can get started with our dinner. So in front of us tonight, we have um, a napkin, we have a place setting, we have a water glass, we have another drink that we're gonna do at the end of the uh, dinner, and we have a bread and butter plate. So let's start with the napkin. So this is typical setup at a, at a fairly nice restaurant, doesn't have to be the most formal restaurant. And uh, you'll notice that my napkin is white. Now, tonight I'm wearing a black skirt, and if I put this white napkin on my black skirt, I'll probably get lint from that, okay? So I, in advance, have asked my server to please provide me with a dark linen. It's perfectly all right. If we were sitting here this way, I would ask my server when she came to the table, do you have a dark linen? If she said yes, she'd provide that for me. If not, I'd say that's fine, not a big deal, and I would go ahead and use the white linen. But to keep my outfit looking fresh and crisp, I've asked her for a dark linen, and she's provided me one. So you take the napkin, gentlemen, you can join me, open the napkin and place it on your lap. Now it's up to you, I've placed it um, folding it this way, but you can also fold your napkin this way. So it's whichever you prefer. But here's what's important in next steps here. Whichever way you fold it, the fold, okay, the folded part goes next to your waist and you place it on your lap set. Now, before you think that all we're trying to do is teach you something to be a little bit of a snob, I want you to know that's not the intention. There's a purpose in everything that we're gonna to do tonight. So why would you want your napkin this direction? This is done so that when you wanna use your napkin, you simply pick your napkin up, you can open the part that is the split, you can use the inside of the napkin, close it back up, and you keep your clothes clean, your lap is clean, anything that's on the napkin is on the inside of the napkin. Again, there's a purpose in everything that we're going to do tonight. So I hope you'll be practicing this. 
Um, and so when you get the chance, remember, napkin folded, the fold goes next to your waist. All right, so that's step one for this evening. All right, let me check my notes. Um, on next steps, I think, uh, Jen, we're probably ready for our first course. And while the first course is coming out, um, I want to talk a little bit more about why we do this whole module on etiquette and business professionalism. Several years ago, I had students tell me that they went to a job interview. And after the interview, the um, person who was interviewing them invited them to go to lunch with a couple of other people from the office. She really thought that the interview was over and that they had decided to hire her. They were going to take her to lunch. Mistake. Really, what they're doing at that point is continuing the interview. But continuing the interview in a way that you'll relax a little and uh, they'll get to know you a little better. And really, at that point, somebody has already determined that you could do this job, whatever it is that you're being interviewed for. Now what they're looking for is the right fit with the organization. And that fit is what they're going to learn about you over lunch. So that interview is going to continue. So don't stop interviewing. Continue that process. And that's also why we're teaching you the rules of the game here tonight. These rules of the game are to make you comfortable so that when you're in that formal setting for the first time, you're not wondering what are you supposed to do next. Let's face it. Most of us have eaten a lot of meals out of a brown paper bag or off of a cafeteria tray. And so when you sit down at a formal dinner like this or even a business lunch, very similar setting, it's really easy to be very nervous about that. And rightfully so if you've not done it before. That's why we want you to do, do this and practice it at home so that you're comfortable. If we were not in the time of COVID, as we are right now, then of course we would be having all of our incoming freshman students have dinner with us here at Rhapsody Restaurant, which is the college owned, run by our culinary program restaurant here in Nelsonville on the town square. We do those dinners so that you get the chance to practice. Since we can't do those dinners in person right now, we hope you will do this and practice this at home. All right, I think we're ready for our first round. And the first round tonight is a soup. And you'll notice that our server served from my left. And when he goes to pick up, he will pick up from the right. So let's talk a little bit about all of this silverware in front of us now. Here is the general rule that you'll want to remember. And that is that you always start on the outside and move in. So we have spoons on the right. We have forks on the left. The first spoon has a large bowl. Not always, though. Sometimes they, they look very similar, OK? So always start on the outside, no matter the size of the particular spoon. This is your soup spoon. And in order to eat your soup, the one thing we don't want to do is end up on my jacket or as Ryan told me before, on his tie, right? And so to avoid that, what you do is you, you take the soup spoon and you move away from you instead of toward me this way, which is more likely to end up on my clothes, away from me. And it's okay to lean over the bowl, but you never want to go down to the food. You always bring the food up to you. Mmm, pretty good. <laughs> bon appetit, my friends. Also, you always will wait for your host to be the first one to take the first bite. That's kind of your clue that it's okay then for everybody else at the table to eat. Your host knows the rules of the game, and your host is not going to eat until everyone has been served. So once they eat, then feel free to eat. Well, 
we certainly have enjoyed our first course tonight, and that is the soup. So let's talk about when you've finished your, uh, on your course, whatever it is. We always want the server to be very comfortable in picking up the plates. And so what we're going to do is place our utensil in a four o'clock position on the plate. We do that so when the server comes, they can pick the plate up, putting their finger over the spoon, and therefore the spoon doesn't fall out of the uh, dish or um, onto the floor or onto us either way. Now you'll notice all of us have kind of finished our meal at a different place. Jeff, uh, Ryan, myself, it doesn't matter how much you've eaten. As soon as you're done, place your utensil at four o'clock. Until that time, you should leave your utensil higher on the plate because it's a signal to your server. A well-trained server will know that I've not finished my meal, but here at four o'clock, they will expect to be able to come and pick up my meal, even though you'll notice I still haven't eaten all of my soup. I always get the question, what do I do if I don't like what's been served? It's always polite because a chef and others have prepared something for you, for you to taste it. Many times you will have a pre-planned menu, so you may not get to always order exactly what you want. And so always taste whatever the food is. Of course, unless you have some type of food allergy. If you do, very quietly let your server know that in advance of being served. It's, don't make a big production about it, but very quietly letting the server know, and they'll avoid serving you anything that you might have an allergy to. So now the server knows we've all finished. We're in the floor, four o'clock position on the plate, and so our server will come and remove our dishes. Thank you, that's very no good. Problem. So let's talk a little bit more about this place setting in front of us. So um, there's several ways to remember which is your bread plate. So the bread plate is always to your left, but sometimes that can be a little hard to remember. So I do it like this, okay? I'll turn around to the camera. This is my bread, this is a B, and this is my drink, this is a D. So bread and drink, okay? So that's one way, and you can kind of do it down on your lap and remember which is which. That way you don't, I don't end up using Jeff's bread plate, and then Jeff doesn't have a bread plate, and it confuses the whole table. So this is one of those points that if you know, you're gonna be much more comfortable. So bread and drink. Uh, another way to remember it, I'm a car buff. I really enjoy nice cars. And so B, M, W. Bread, meal, water. B, M, W. So again, these are just little tricks for remembering uh, what it is that you're supposed to do when you're in this kind of a setting. All right. And uh, Miss Jen has served our bread on the table. So um, we could do this several ways. Actually, the bread is closest to Jeff, so Jeff would normally pick that up. I'm going to pick it up because I want, you, I want to show you one other thing. So the person who's closest to the bread would, would usually be the first to pick up the bread. What you always do, though, is never take the first piece of bread, okay? You offer it to the person on the right. Would you like some bread? Thank you. Very good. Take mine, Ryan. Thank you. And then Ryan would take it, and Ryan would go ahead and either pass it to the next person, or in this case, just set it back onto the table. All right, now, to eat your bread. I bet some of you at home know exactly how to eat that piece of bread, right? Let's cut it in half, butter both sides, put it back together and have this great butter sandwich, right? But in a formal setting like this, we're going to do something a little bit different than that. What you do is you take your roll, you break off a single piece, about uh, meal si uh, bite size. We have the knife is on the butter plate, but if it was not, if we didn't have a knife here, and sometimes your setup won't have that, then you would use your regular knife and you would place it across the butter uh, bread plate uh, like so. Never put a dirty utensil back on the plate. So I do have a butter. I'm going to use it. Put the butter on my bread. Put the butter knife back on the plate. Again, never back on the table because you don't want to uh, soil the table. 
And then I have my bite. Bon appetit. Gentlemen. So this is our salad and a um, little appetizer tonight. Looks like maybe a crab cake. Goat cheese medallion. A goat cheese medallion. Okay, very nice. So when I'm ready for the second piece of bread, I simply break off another piece. If I want butter on it, put a little butter on it and continue to eat my bread uh, one piece at a time, uh, one bite at a time. All right, so we have a beautiful salad and again, which utensil to use? I have all these utensils in front of me. Forks are on the left, and I'm gonna start on the outside and start working my way in. So I take my fork that's farthest on the outside, and as the host, the guys are waiting for me to have my first bite to know that everybody can go ahead and eat. And so I will have my first bite. Mmm, very good, gentlemen. Depending on the makeup of the salad, this salad has been um, chopped up fairly fine, so it's pretty easy for me to, to eat just bite sizes, but if not, it's perfectly appropriate to use your knife to cut the lettuce uh, if you need to do that. Bon appetit! So let's talk a little bit about this utensil that's in my hand. What do I do with that while I'm eating? So I may want to stop and enjoy the conversation with my colleagues. So I, again, place my uh, fork at around 1 or 2 o'clock, never on the side of the dish. So this would be kind of like an oar on the side of a boat. We want to avoid that. Keep your utensils inside of your dish whenever you're uh, using them. So I finished my salad now. Again, I'm going to put my fork at four o'clock. And so uh, somebody can come along and pick that up very easily, uh, making sure that the fork doesn't land again on me or on the floor. So we'll allow our server to come in. Thank you. Please give my compliments to the chef. It was excellent. So let's talk a little bit about RSVP. You may have seen that on an invitation before. Um, if you're invited to a wedding or a uh, business event, it may say RSVP. What that means is please let us know if you're going to come to the event so that we can prepare. It's very important that you always respond to an RSVP. Respond that you will come or respond that you will, will not be able to attend and offer your um, some kind of nice comment to the person. Thank you for the invitation. However, I'm traveling that week and will not be able to attend. That would be very appropriate. Or, um, I will be attending. Thank you for the invitation. Um, and if it's a plus one, let them know the first name of the plus one. Because sometimes at tables like this, there may be um, cards with names. And you'll want to be able to uh, identify the person who would be coming with you. So tonight I'm di dining with colleagues um, that I'm very familiar with, but often you'll be having dinner with someone who you just may be meeting for the first time. So when you meet a person, one of the tricks to remembering the names, it's always hard for me to remember names, uh, there's lots of tricks to this, but one I like to use is just to repeat the person's name and to associate it with something else that will help me to remember that. So with Ryan, I might say, Ryan, it's great to meet you. I always think of the actor, Ryan O'Neill, when I hear the name Ryan. Now that's going to stick with me a lot better than just Ryan and then I kind of don't have anything to make that connection. So use those kind of tricks to help you a little bit uh, in remembering names. People will really appreciate it if later on I can say something to Ryan like, so Ryan, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about the work you do. And so now I've acknowledged him. I'm asking him a very business appropriate type of question. That's the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is what to ask questions about or what to talk about at a meal like this. You can get really nervous if it gets silent for too long. 
Um, one of the things I do is I like to pick up the, uh, a little bit of the news every day. I stay away from politics and I stay away from religion. These are two topics that can be very emotionally charged. Uh, but there's a lot of things going on in the news um, that are worth talking about. Um, and so kind of think before you go to an event, what are some of the things that I could talk about? So if you happen to be going to an event and you know there are people who enjoy sports, uh, you can always say, so have you been watching Joey Burroughs at all play for the Bengals? I've really been enjoying those games. And so again, know your audience, know who you're talking with, and then select some casual conversation things that will make people comfortable at your table. A lot of this etiquette that we're talking about here is really about making other people comfortable in the situation and to make yourself comfortable as well. All right, I think we're ready for the next. And I'm gonna show you what I would never do in a restaurant. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is pasta. And while I dearly love pasta, it is a really messy thing to eat, okay? It's also, I really like those really thick sandwiches that have a lot of dressing and things on them, but when you squish them and you go to eat them, they go everywhere. Keep in mind, this is a business setting. I wanna create a good impression with the people I'm, I'm with, so I would avoid this meal. However, there may be times when pasta is served as the main course and you didn't have a selection. So I do want to show you how to use, how to um, eat the pasta tonight. So usually there's a large spoon that's presented along with the fork and you simply take a very small amount and you can twist it like so. Again, don't worry about getting too much on the fork at one time. Again, you can lean over but never down to your meal a la. I'm going to allow them to take this back because I know it's not my best meal. So <laughs> thank you very much, Miss Jen. So we thought we'd just give you a, a taste of what it's like to select things from the menu. Pasta is usually an inexpensive thing on the menu. So let's talk about ordering on the menu. Um, so this Rhapsody is a fine dining restaurant, but we have entree items that um, start out at $8 and go up to $28. And so if I were with a group of people and I'm having dinner, I would select something that was mid-range in the price. I would never order the most expensive thing on the menu. You're also not expected to order the most inexpensive thing on the menu, but keep in mind, this is a business setting. And my actions at this business setting are going to say more about me than just uh, what I have for dinner or what I enjoy eating. It's going to say, am I kind of extravagant or am I more conservative? Um, and the price of your meal is one of the ways that you really demonstrate that. Another thing, uh, I never salt or pepper anything before I taste it because again, I don't wanna create that impression that I just assume it's not gonna be okay Besides, it's kind of discourteous to the chef. Um, and so always taste your food before you use salt or pepper. All right, I think we're ready now for our next entree. Thank you. Looks beautiful. So tonight we have a risotto. It looks like uh, beef medallions and then um, some fall vegetables. Now I'm gonna talk about two different ways to hold your silverware. Now I'm sure you're thinking, really? I grew up, I eat every day, I know how to hold my silverware. There are actually a couple of different ways that are appropriate to hold the silverware. We in America typically use what we call the American style. Place it in your dominant hand. Take a bite. But there is a secondary method. And a lot of people really enjoy eating calling, using what we call the European or the continental method. So let's, for example, look at the piece of the meat. Nice protein here. I'm gonna cut a piece. Okay. 
When I'm done with my knife, remember, not back on the table, place it across the top of my plate, and then, with the continental style, I leave it in this left hand and eat. As a matter of fact, I can keep my, my knife in my hand. With the protein, that's pretty easy. I stab it and I eat it. With the vegetables, it'll be pretty easy also. So how do I do the risotto? Because the risotto is a little more tricky. I can't just stab it, right? You actually place the risotto on the back of the fork, like so, and eat. This is the continental or the European method. If you've not tried that before, have some fun and just try it. My preference, I grew up American style, and so I usually do American style, which means every time I cut my meat, I'm going to have to lay my fork down, or my knife down, so I can change hands for the fork and go ahead and eat. Bon appetit, gentlemen. Well, I really enjoyed my meal. So again, my knife is across the plate because that's uh, where we put it when we're not using it. So I wanna place it beside my fork. I want it, the sharp end facing me and the fork goes directly beside it. Again, the placement at four o'clock says to my server that you're welcome to take my plate now. I have finished my meal. So we'll allow that. So um, let's talk a little bit about some other things that might happen when you're at a lunch or a dinner such as we are tonight. You may be asked if you'd like to have an alcoholic beverage or a drink. And um, my recommendation always is if it's a business setting like this, it's better to avoid that. Uh, keep that to your personal life and those social settings with friends um, and you will never ever go wrong. Keep in mind, you don't wanna be that person that everybody remembers what you did at the last event that you attended because maybe you had a drink or two and you let your guard down. So again, you're trying to be in an upwardly mobile pathway and you wanna be sure that the people that you're interacting with on a professional basis see you that every single day. Even in the, what you're wearing to work, um, I always like to use the phrase, dress for the job that you want not the job that you have. So if you want a job that requires a little bit more professional look, then dress like that uh, so that people could see you in that different role. Um, it will pay off in the long run. So avoiding alcohol is the best bet, um, but if you choose to have an alcoholic beverage, then my second uh, best advice is, of course, never if you're under 21, uh, underage consumption would be another way that you would say to the people who are interviewing you that you don't have respect for the rules and so you don't want to send that message. So um, if you do are old enough to have a beverage and you choose to do that then one is always the limit. Let's talk a little bit about body language. So you'll notice tonight that um, while we're sitting here at the table uh, everybody's sitting up straight and um, we're relaxed, but not slouching in the chair. Also notice that we're not putting hands on the table um, and certainly never elbows. So it's best to keep your hands in your lap, especially among COVID-19 times when we're all much more cautious about touching things and so forth. So um, body language is important. Also in COVID-19, of course, we're all wearing masks on a regular basis, but let's face it, we haven't figured out how to eat with each other with a mask on. And so, of course, that changes the atmosphere just a little bit. Um, you'll have to use discretion about who you're dining with. I think probably right now there are a lot less business lunches because people are simply avoiding those situations. Uh, but if you're in a position, uh, as we are here this evening, um, then you have to make those choices. Also, uh, the small talk I mentioned earlier, make sure you're prepared um, to talk about things that are of interest, um, but avoid those topics that could be highly controversial. 
All right, I think we're ready for our dessert. So in Snapchat and the uh, Facebook and all the other social media, it would be very tempting right now for me to take my phone and take a picture of that and put it out there for all my friends to see. But in a business environment such as this, phones are never to be brought out at the business table. Now, if you happen to be on call, now some of you may be studying to be nurses, police officers, firefighters, or other kinds of professions where you're going to be on call. When you sit down at the table with your guests, just let them know, you know, I'm on call this evening. Or if you're a parent and you have young children at home, let the table know in advance, you know, you know I'm a single mom or there's nobody, uh, you know, I have a babysitter tonight with the family, so um, I am gonna keep my phone next to me. If I take a call, you know it's from them. That kind of sets the stage to say, I'm just not going to answer my phone, but if it is something that I really, you know, I'm either on call for my job or my children, then of course anybody will understand that. If you get that call, excuse yourself from the table and uh, take your call away from the table. So let me um, talk about getting up from the table for just a minute. So if you want to excuse yourself from the table, you would simply rise, excuse me for just a moment please, lay your napkin on your chair, it tells your server that you're going to be returning to your chair. And then when you leave and return, simply pick your napkin up again, return to your seat, and return to your meal. When we finish the meal completely, then our napkin will go to the left of our final place serving. This says then to your server that you have completed your meal and they're free to clear the table and if there's a check to bring the check. So gentlemen, this dessert looks delicious and I'm gonna try some. So let's talk about the final service. There's a teaspoon here if we were gonna have coffee this evening or tea, I would be able to use my uh, teaspoon but what we've been served here tonight, I'm going to use this fork that lies across the top of the plate. It's been there the whole service, the whole evening. It's just been waiting for dessert to come. So we're gonna use this fork for the dessert. I almost hate to eat this, it's so pretty. Mmm, enjoy. Very good. So we've just completed our uh, dessert course, and so again, the, my fork is at four o'clock, and telling my server that he'll be able to pick this up whenever he's ready to. We have also have service tonight, um, a, a little special drink that's been fixed for us to toast. So I would like to offer a toast to the chef and our service staff tonight. And, um, when you toast in a formal setting as this, you raise your glass to each other, but you do not touch glasses. Okay, so we raise our glasses to each other. Now, if I were toasting an individual at my table, so if I, for example, wanted to give a toast to Mr. Daubemeyer, he would leave his glass here, and I would say something like, I have, I'd like to give a toast to Mr. Daubemeyer. You've been very successful this year. Thank you very much for your help. And then uh, Ryan and I would raise our glasses to Mr. Daubemeyer, but he doesn't raise his glass because he's the one we're toasting. So I will now offer my toast to the chef and to the staff so that we can all have a drink. We raise our glasses together and enjoy. We finish our meal. Uh, napkins go to the left of the last plate. And I'm going to ask Chef and uh, our server, and Miss Jen, who've made it possible tonight. They are uh, the regular staff here at uh, Rhapsody Restaurant on the Square in Nelsonville. So we have Miss Jen Yanity. Jen is um, the front of the house manager here at Rhapsody, and she also teaches front of the house. And with her is uh, one of our culinary students, Michael uh, Swart. 
Stewart, I'm sorry, my school Stewart. And then uh, Chef Otis Meeks is uh, our chef here at Rhapsody. So we appreciate all of them and appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you all. So just on a final note to conclude, tonight's lesson is a little bit about all the silverware and the different entrees and so forth. But more than that, it's really about you and about building your brand, a professional brand, a brand that takes you into the business world, whether you choose to work in the healthcare industry, in the music industry, in public service, whatever industry you're choosing to move into. Having the confidence when you sit down at a table at maybe a banquet or some kind of an event or that most important interview, that you're going to have the confidence that you know what to do. You're going to know how to go about building a network, introducing yourself to people, being introduced to people, and be comfortable in all of that. That's our goal from this. You know, employers always tell us when they hire our graduates, they never ever worry about whether or not they're going to have the skills necessary to do the job. They truly believe that our college is one of the best when it comes to development of those job skills that are necessary in the field of study that you've chosen. If there's ever a point in which the students aren't very successful, it's more about that professional brand, professional image, that ability to work in a team, communicate effectively, those very soft skills that are just as important as the hard skills that you're learning in your programs. This is about developing those soft skills and that professional demeanor, that professional attitude, professional dress, and so that you always come across as the ultimate professional in your field, middle class and upwardly mobile. I wish you all the very best and if there's ever anything I can do to help any of you, my office is in Light Hall at Hawking College and I'm there to talk to you. Again, I'm Betty Young. I'm your president at Hawking College. Thanks for being with me today.